So the last one we have is logical operators, which is the following. So we have the following operators for that. We have we have double and and or and we have not. So what these are is basically they can they check the logical validity of two left and statements to the right and left. And these statements are conditional statements. So let's see the far. Let's say var logic one equals we're gonna have some variables var x equals ten var y equals seven. So in these logical operators, the operands are log are conditional statements. So we say let's say x is equal to less than twelve and y is less than six. I mean greater than six. So what this is saying is if both sides are true, then return true. That's how and works. That's how and works in basically all logic. And I didn't I didn't display it console logic one. And it gets true because x is less than twelve and y is less than greater than six. We also have or which returns whoops which returns the if either side is true and one is if one side is true and one side is false then you return true so basically you're saying if x is less than 12 or if y is greater than 6 return um, true so let's change this to um, 13 let's change this to 5 you'll get false all right, and the last one we have is not. So what the not operator does, it's not it's not like before the squiggly, it's actually an exclamation point. What that does, it reverses the result of whatever this, con this condition turns out to be. So in this case, let's say back to 12, this is true, but when we say not true, that means false. So we're saying if this is false, this side will be false now. And the other side is false, so you get actually this because wait, 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 hold on a sec. So that's because it's twelve. You get false. So because that was false before, it was false inverted the true. So this will invert whatever result is inside these parentheses. You don't even have to do this, but if you parentheses is recommended if you're doing a whole statement. Like if you just did this, just x not x that means you're checking if x is empty itself so like we'll explain that later in conditional statements for now just know that this will invert the boolean value of whatever is here so since x is some sort of value it's true this will invert it to false and then we get false so let's do the same for y we get false and without anything that means you're just checking if it's empty or not. And since it's, oops. Anyway, forget that. I save it for fresh. Your sense 10 for some reason, which is weird. Anyway, what? I, that, but you get the idea. So we'll check that more in um in uh in later tutorials. Anyway, let's move on. So the last thing I want to talk about in this chapter is operator precedence. So let's say you have some sort of math operation to do. We're going to do cut that. So let's say var math op equals. So let's say we have a situation where you have multiple mathematical operations times 2 plus 33. What would be processed first? So like basically we follow PEMDAS, right? So we basically do multiplication before addition and that's how it is in um, JavaScript as well but we have a lot more operators so we are going to have a, a certain hierarchy of like or order of precedence to keep in mind when working with JavaScript so when we do this we actually get 175 times 2 which is 350 plus 33 which is 388 console um, math op refresh 383 my bad not 388 I, I thought that was 38 for a second and you wouldn't get something like 
35 times 175. Let's see, 175 times 35. You don't get that number because of the order of precedence of operators. So just a, it's just a quick tip to keep in mind when, when working with operators, be sure to know order of precedence. And if you want something strictly to go first in the operation, you add parentheses around it like I did before with the conditional operators. That means what JavaScript, the interpreter in JavaScript will look at the whatever's in parentheses first and then continue with everything else around it. So if I strictly wanted that 6,125, I think it was, I would do this first and then I would do the rest because Parentheses take are the highest order of precedence in JavaScript. And speaking of higher order of precedence, we will let's let's list all of them right now. So we're gonna make a multi-line comment right here. So first go parentheses. Anything written in parentheses is solved first, like we did here. And then you have whatever's but in the dots, parentheses, uh, commas, and square brackets. Now dots are done with like, so for example, in functions, these are done, for example, in, um, in commas are done in sets, for example, in certain data structures and in, in arrays and square brackets are actually arrays, for example. So like, just keep that in mind. It's, you might not see a lot of these come together, for example, but, um, you might see them. I'm just explaining how JavaScript looks at all these operators, which one it looks at first. Then you have parentheses as in function calls. Oops. Function calls, actually. So I actually made a mistake here. Don't remember that. So function calls. So like whatever, whatever parentheses we have. Then you have new, which creates a new object. Then you have incremental operators, i1, and i like i minus minus, and i plus plus that are the post the postfix you'll see that they're used a lot in loops then you have the prefix ones which are checked after now what i'm doing here i'm just showing you if if you ever run into a situation where javascript is working with all these operators in one sort of operation which ones it will go to first and then after the incremental operators you have all the arithmetic so all arithmetic and then after that, so actually you, to be more specific, you have star, you have multiplication, division, modulus, and star, star. So exponential, which doesn't work in my case. So like, like in PEMDAS example, for example, you multiply before you add, then you have addition and subtraction. Then you have the bitwise operators. Then you have the bitwise operators like that. So like you'll have, if you have a binary operation with numbers added on the right and left, those they'll be added first, and then bitwise operators will be done. The bitwise operation will be done. Then you have the comparison operators, so like these, the less than, the less than and greater than operators, and then you have the assignment operators. So anything done with the equal sign. Oh, and actually, there's another one I forgot. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. Basically, we have a not for comparison. We have not equals. So that means like 27. That means like you're checking if something's not equal to the other thing. And that is false. Well, it's true, actually. Not, I mean, not false because they're not equal numbers. That's the not assignment operator. And you also have for not type sign operator. So it checks the type as well. So 22, that returns true, and this will return false. Yep, those are forgotten, so sorry guys. And then we have the, the logical operators and or, um, or, and then finally the assignment arithmetic operators. So why I showed you this is just because um, you should keep in mind in these in one programming that um, when how to write like conditional statements, which we'll see in another chapter. 
and like writing oper operators operations in general. The main ones you need to know is that these these operators, the and and or logical operators come last and the parentheses come first. Those are the main ones you should know. And these two to some extent as well. You should know the increment the assignment arithmetic operators where they stand and the mathematical ones. But I generally just put things in parentheses to tell something. I strictly I want this done first. And then I have you, you often use logical operators. To conclude this chapter, I would like to just take a few minutes to talk about something called scope. So scope is basically like sort of like the extent the extent of where you can of where you can use a variable. So like the set of variables you have access to in a sort of realm inside your JavaScript. If you're not sure what I mean by realm or sort of like section of your JavaScript, like so basically in JavaScript and later on we'll be seeing that we'll be making functions and dealing with objects. And we're gonna have things like this. So let's do that. So function, let's call it test function. And we're gonna have an object as well. So var obj equals so blank. So let's call it test like test object. Okay, so what I did here is that I'm anywhere you see square these curly braces, that means you sort of you sort of have a sort of sub body in your whole large larger body of JavaScript code. So you have some sort of sub realm of your global of your whole JavaScript code. I'm calling it realm because it's kind of like you can't have access to it and you just, unless you have some sort of gateway into that realm. I'm I'll explain that in a little bit. But uh, anyway, let me get back to the problem at hand. So the whole time in this first two chapters, we've been declaring JavaScript um, variables like from line by line down, line from from the top line downward, so linearly. So we're gonna have var a equals five. And then inside here, let's say we have var b equals uh, I don't know function var b. Let's say it's a string. And inside here we have an attribute, which is, we'll we'll say it's a variable test which is supposed to run test object. So the whole time we've been calling just directly the variable. So let's try, let's, we've been calling the variable directly like a, so a returns all fine, right? That returns five. So let's try to call b now. It should, you think it might return function var, right? Nope, it says undefined. That's because this console log is in the global scope. The global scope is in the entire um, entire JavaScript. While A is accessible to anything anywhere, B is only accessible by wherever it's it's surrounding, it's encapsulating realm, let's say. Function B is only accessible through this by using this function and to return to get that value we'd have to use return to get that value literally so we'd have to call we'd have to get access to its realm so it's sort of like out it's encapsulating realm to get b and that's the return is an op, uh, operator for returning the value from a function which we'll talk about in the function chapter so don't worry i'm just demonstrating you how to how the scope works but if we just said b, you get undefined because globally you can't. There's no b found. However, if we specify the realm it's in, so test func, that's where b is located. So we said in the function we're going to return b. That's a sort of portal to b. So we're saying, okay, give me access. Call test function, which is just going to return a value, b, and that's how we got b. And let's look at the object now. So. Let's say, okay, I want test now. Give me test. And it's going to be the same situation. Test is undefined because test is only located inside this object. So in order to get access to it, we say obj.test. 
And that's how that sort of works. So objects are access basically dot and then the object, the, the attribute's name, and then sort of the attribute's name. And then you get the variable based on the attribute. So to conclude that, scopes are basically defined when you see curly braces. And in order to get access to those variables and curly braces, we have to do various things to, to be able to access in its scope. And anything outside curly braces is in the global scope. It could be accessed anywhere, anytime inside the whole JavaScript. However, anything inside curly braces cannot be accessed without special calls and special sort of workarounds. So that's kind of that's kind of it on scopes for now. I hope this kind of helps. It's I didn't I don't mean to confuse you with this. But um, this is just to prepare you for what's ahead. We'll be working with functions, we'll be working with scope, we'll be working with objects, and, mo and much more. So we hope this helped, and we hope to see you next time.